so do you remember that moment when you first saw that amazing band, or you saw that, that brilliant play, or maybe you saw an incredible old classic movie right here at the Lowe's, and you were just stopped in your tracks, you were just, oh, and you were literally blown away. And, you know, maybe it even changed your life just a little bit. And it's, I think it's moments like that, and you get moments like that from anything. You could get it from seeing a band, or you could get it from seeing ballet, or listening to opera, or modern dance, anything. And I think it's, it's moments like that that become part of you. It's those moments and those feelings that, um, that make up, become part of what makes you, you. And uh, for me, uh, one of those moments was when I was at school in New Zealand. And um, a friend of mine walked into my uh, room at school and he pulled out a cassette tape. And he said, mate, you've got to listen to this. It's the Sex Pistols. And that was a punk rock band, if anybody doesn't know. So I was like, okay. So he puts it in, and so we're like, and then straight away it was just, you know, like, it was just 900 miles an hour. And we were just, it was fast and furious. It was just in your face. It was raw and rebellious. And it was just fantastic. And we heard that album, and we were just, and literally, I knew my life had changed. So, so I started getting into punk rock, uh, into punk rock bands, and you know, I, I loved punk rock then, and I love punk rock now. <laughs> but uh, another one of those moments was seeing Shakespeare, and it was seeing um, Anthony Hopkins in King Lear in London, and it was just, it was brutal, it was just, it was so, I mean, it was so sad. Um, and it punched you in the face and punched you in the guts. And, you know, even though it was so sad, I, I still walked out of that theatre three feet off the ground, just going, oh, that was Shakespeare? So then I started, you know, seeing more Shakespeare, um, reading the plays, and ended up with this sort of uh, horrendous Shakespeare addiction that I have today. Right then, punk rock. Shakespeare. So do you think that there's any relation at all? Absolutely there is. And not only because Shakespeare in his day was completely punk rock. He just, he was. <laughs> he, he just blew up all the rules of writing plays. He just did whatever the heck he wanted. So if language didn't exist um, for him to do what he wanted to do in his plays, he just made it up. He just made up words. He did. <laughs> But not only that, um, Shakespeare's own theatre, um, the Globe Theatre, so 3,000 people used to jam themselves into this uh, theatre that was built to hold 1,500. The plays were all done in daylight, so the actors in the audience could see each other, and a lot of times the stage was actually built up here because people would clamber on stage and try and join in the sword fighting. <laughs> they would, and so it was like a total mosh pit sometimes. And so they had special effects, they had explosions, they had sword fighting, and more sword fighting, and here's the mosh pit, yeah! I mean, that's totally punk rock, right? But as I was saying, you know, today, a lot of the times, I think part of the problem is, is um, today the, th the plays are done in big dark theatres where the action happens far away in the distance. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people, and especially young people and kids, just don't want to be stuck in nice, neat rows of numbered seats out there in the darkness with something happening up on a stage where there's no interaction with the, um, with the actors or an audience. So, um, so the question is like, can we find our way, or can we find a way to that crazily um, entertaining atmosphere of Shakespeare's globe? Well, okay. Theatres are expensive. They are expensive beasts to build. Um, so, is there a way to find a, a building material that is, um, that is cheap, super strong, durable, and available everywhere? And you know, you know where I'm going, right? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yes! <laughs> 
There's not much, not much anticipation. This is Frank. He loves containers, by the way. <laughs> and I happen to think that containers are kind of sexy. I mean, is that wrong? But look at them. They're, what are they, apart from giant punk rock Lego building blocks, right? <laughs> so um, I actually uh, uh, use containers myself to build a little uh, performance and art space in Jersey City called the Art Block. You might have seen it downtown um, and over by uh, Hamilton Park. So uh, I was thinking about, you know, could we use containers to perhaps build a theatre? Um, you know, to step up from the Art Block in a way. So I started playing with toy containers on my kitchen table and uh, here's, <laughs> here's my assistant. Come on, I had to use a cat photo, come on. <laughs> um, that's the beast, by the way. Um, so then I started building a, a large plastic model in the front room of our house. And um, it wasn't exactly the decor my wife was uh, thinking about. But um, so then we converted that to a, a, a 3D computer model. And uh, we've been sort of boiling it down and refining and uh, tweaking the design until we get to this, uh, the container globe. It's a reimagining of Shakespeare's original globe, but built with um, scaffolding, uh, rock and roll stage rigging, and shipping containers. Um, and we can use it not just for Shakespeare, but we can use it for any kind of, uh, any kind of live performance, uh, you know, dance, ballet, um, opera, whatever. Um, and of course, punk rock. <laughs> and uh, this is how it's built. So first we start with 20-foot containers, and we cut them open, we put um, seating inside them, and then we arrange them in this semicircle, and this is gonna be the, uh, the seating galleries. Um, and then for the, for the staging, we use 40-foot containers, you know, the big ones, and we build it so it has the same size and elements as Shakespeare's original globe. And the roof over the stage uh, is done with uh, rock and roll rigging. Then we bring it together with the seating galleries, um, and then we build the hallways um, around the globe, uh, the stairwells, etc. And then over the top of it, we put a, um, a steel industrial mesh. And the point of the mesh is to let air and light through to the containers inside, um, but to also provide shading so the containers don't get too hot. And the nice thing about actually the mesh is that when it rains, um, the mesh breaks up the rain drops. So uh, it's much quieter when it rains. And the other thing about the mesh too is um, at night, when we light it up at night, the globe will look like, dun, 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 like this. Um, so it'll glow from within, but during the day it looks like this. And we've, we're playing around with different ways that we can light it up, so uh, according to different effects. Um, uh, and we can also actually embed LED, little LED lights, just like they have in rock and roll screens. Um, so we can turn the whole thing into a giant 360 degree um, billboard. And not only that, this globe is actually mobile. It's a movable globe. So in the same way that um, containers travel around the world, so can the container globe. I've been working in the business offices for various rock and roll bands for over 25 years, and uh, including these gentlemen. And um, I've been really lucky to work with some fantastic road crews that break down and move, um, you know, huge rock and roll stages all around the world. And the same way we'll be able to do that with the um, container globe. Because we can actually break it down and put it into its own containers and use those containers as uh, transportation units, you know, because that's what um, containers do. So, you know, feasibly we'll be able to build it in Jersey City and then move it to Detroit and then maybe to Brooklyn, or to you know, Central Park. But I think what's really interesting about the fact that it's mobile, it gives us really interesting opportunity, I think, because we can uh, move container globes into underserved or underprivileged communities. Um, so there's, there's so many communities, neighborhoods, and areas around Jersey City, and around America, and around the world that don't have any access to the arts at all. There, they have no theatres, no cultural venues. Um, and so the impact of actually getting a cultural venue into a neighbourhood like that can be huge, not only for promotion of the arts, but also for uh, economic development. So um, 
you know, imagine moving a globe into an underprivileged neighborhood and maybe building it on vacant, you know, blighted land and creating jobs, um, helping local businesses, and, you know, even attracting food trucks or pop-up restaurants and cafes and shops. And maybe even we could build a little uh, community green space or park around it. And, uh, you know, we don't actually have to just use it as a live performance venue. We can use it as a, you know, a temporary art gallery or a, a movie theatre, why not? Or, you know, we were thinking about actually taking the stage out in winter and turning it into a, um, a skating rink. But I think, and what's also exciting is that it'll be a huge resource for education because, you know, what kids are not going to want to go to a glow-in-the-dark, big... Mad Max Thunderdome Theatre. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, but we can also, yes, we can actually add spikes to the globe. So we can make it, we can make it more punk rock. <laughs> we can turn it into a big spiky globe. So we'll punk it up. But not only that, we can turn those spikes into giant air purifiers. What? So did anybody see this, come on, there we go. Did anybody see this, um, this amazing sculpture over by a Museum of Modern Art in Queens back in 2012? It's called, uh, it was called Wendy, and you know, it looks fantastic, right? But what's really interesting is that this fabric um, contains nanoparticles, and these nanoparticles um, have a catalytic reaction with carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide, you know, is a greenhouse gas. So when carbon dioxide molecules hit that fabric, the catalytic reaction grabs the carbon and releases the oxygen. So ca captures carbon, releases oxygen. And that's what trees do. So this sculpture is actually like a, 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 an urban rainforest. And what's completely crazy about it is that that, that sculpture is the equivalent of 8,000 square meters of rainforest. So that thing is like a, 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 it is an urban rainforest. And we can do the same thing with the globe. So with those spikes, we can turn those into air purifiers. Or if we want to, we can actually wrap parts of the globe in this fabric and turn it into a, you know, even bigger rainforest. We'll be able to move container globes into underserved, underprivileged communities to help um, foster uh, the arts, education, and economic activity. And we can clean the air while we're doing it. The Container Globe is a punk rock reimagining of Shakespeare's classic globe, his classic globe from 1599. So might we be able to say, tonight we're going to party like it's 1599? <laughs> but, 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 Shakespeare always says it best. All the world's a stage. Thank you.